<laughs> Nick Hornby's latest novel is called Juliet Naked, and it's published by Riverhead Books. Uh, many of your characters use music to relate to other people, uh, but also to judge them. And uh, I, I think this is something that happens with books as well. Somebody will come to your home and look at your, your book collection, and you know that you're either coming out of it looking okay or looking like an idiot in their eyes. It's going to be interesting in the future if e-readers really take off, and obviously we all have music stored in these tiny little white cigarette boxes as well, that um, if we're not displaying our taste in our home, I think it will make some of us feel quite insecure. Yeah. How well do you think that Duncan would get along with Dick, the music nerd clerk from High Fidelity? Uh, I think Duncan would feel very superior. Um, I, I conceived Duncan as a kind of scholar monke, that um, if he'd obsessed about Gerard Manley Hopkins or, or Jane Austen or Marla, he would be gainfully employed um, in an English institution talking about them all day. But, of course, he can't do that. Well, we have this whole thing with rock music becoming more than just popular music, and we even see it in uh, Tucker, who says that his influences are Dylan Thomas, Harold Pinter, Johnny Cash, Albert Camus, and early Dolly Parton. <laughs> I think that's Duncan, actually, oh, who's citing. Yeah. Yes, I'm not sure Tucker would say that about himself, but Duncan sees all this in the music. Well, the protagonists of uh, Juliet Naked are slightly older than the characters of your earlier books. On one level... Uh, they're struggling with the sort of things that all adults have to struggle with, uh, parent-child relationships, for example, and yet they can't get past their adolescent obsessions. And I always think about this. In the past, teenagers um, would love pop music of their time, and then they would move on to something less youth-oriented, Sinatra, Tony Bennett, maybe jazz, classical music, maybe a combination of all. Uh, now many of them just continue to listen to the same music that they listened to when they were younger. Well, I think... Um, and it's not just nostalgia. It's something else. It's not nostalgia. And and partly we we have the example of artists growing old in front of our eyes. We were talking about Dylan earlier on. Well, you know, here is a man who is uh, no spring chicken anymore, but is, over the last few years, has made some music that is of value about growing old, I think. Neil Young's done the same thing. Springsteen's done the same thing. Um, it, I don't think it is an adolescent obsession anymore. And you can see some bands and musicians who clearly won't, I think, be able to bridge that gap. But uh, plenty of others will. And it, it's an idiom that survived, I think, unexpectedly so. In, in, the, in this case, we have this musician who kind of dropped out. Now, why would he have dropped out after he'd had a hit record? And, and uh, part of the, this story also involves n a new release based on the, uh, the, the it's called, the, I guess, Juliet Naked, mm. because uh, it doesn't have all of, it's the demo records. It doesn't exactly. have all the fancy instrumentation that the original release had. Um, well, Tucker partly dropped out without giving too much of the story away um, because he felt that he uh, um, he pretty much said all he had to say in this in this one album and um, he I think was worried about how he was going to follow it up and uh, as we hinted at before he was troubled by the authenticity of, of this particular album the breakup is with a woman who he realizes he did not care all that much about anyway. exactly <laughs> um, and you know that was something that was prompted by all the songs that we hear all the time where I found myself thinking I wonder you know did he really care about this woman this song that we're listening to 30 or 40 years later or was it a one night stand uh, was he out of his head at the time th that he met her uh, there are all sorts of issues of authenticity and things like that now Bob Dylan um, was reported to have said that nothing good has been written the past 20 years in in pop music, would you go along with that? No, um, I think there's been. Is he just protecting his own, defending his own turf? Well, Dylan seems to be going further and further back into the past. You know, with each year that he's he's gone way beyond his own childhood. Even he's 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 further back than that. And um, I think that there is a, a kind of uh, authenticity that he prizes that he isn't going to find anymore now. But I think there are plenty of good bands around. Now, you not only write novels, you have done a fair number of film scripts uh, you're, you're working on, or have you already finished uh, the script for an education? 
an education comes out next week. Oh, uh, well, it's, um, <laughs> it better be finished. <laughs> I'm just doing the last touches now, yeah. Um, no, it opens on, I think, October the 9th and, um, and premieres next week. Uh, it, uh, how, does it, how does it compare working on somebody else's text, somebody else's ideas, as opposed to stuff that you're, that's just coming out of your own imagination? Um, well, I, I worked on a piece that was originally 10 pages long, and um, and I turned this into a 120-page screenplay. So for me, this was the ideal um, combination that I was given a suggestion, as it were, of characters and, and a, a narrative arc, and I could flesh it out how I wanted. Uh, a number of your books have been made into films as well. And I, I, I wonder if you're ever surprised. Uh, a character, when you were writing the character, you probably imagined the person looking a certain way, talking a certain way, and uh, even delivering a line that you wrote in a certain way, and then suddenly it's quite different. Well, I, I think the big difference is that when I'm writing books, I never imagine people to look like John Cusack or Hugh Grant or Colin Firth. They tend to be, I think, in my own head, more ordinary than that. But, of course, that's the difference between movies and life. No ordinary-looking person can can make a living in a in the movie world. 